Good morning, YouTube, and Happy New Year. Um, I was really hoping this morning that we would end up starting out on the aircraft carrier that we landed on yesterday, but it doesn't look that that, that way. They've got me at KNXF um, as though I had landed here. I had no plans on it. So what I was thinking of doing this morning was flying from here to uh, Camp Pendleton, which is KNFG, is it? Let me see here. Let me have a look at my notes. Yeah, KNFG is Camp Pendleton. I don't know how far away that is relative to this airport. Um, this airport calls itself M MCOLF or MCOLF Camp Pendleton. So it must be very close or nearby. So I may bypass uh, Camp Pendleton altogether, just kind of fly over the runway and have a look at it as opposed to landing and then fly on to Palm Springs. If I do that, the airport there is KPSP that we'll be landing at. Okay, 20% on that. So, I think the radio station for the, uh, I was trying to get to 111.8 for NFG and I was not able to yesterday, so we ended up flying to the Oceanside Waypoint, which was 115.3. Um, that is still programmed in there, so I'm going to leave that in there for the time being, but I'm also going to look up the uh, a Waypoint for KPSP. Let me see what's near there. Move this and move out. KPSP. Palm Springs. And here's a VOR here, and it's 115.5 for that way station. I'll move that back to there. Alright, and we'll go ahead and program that into this radio. So everything visual this morning. I won't do any uh, GPS or RNAV landings. And we're just going to leave this in standby for the time being. We'll flip it over once we get in the air. Let's see, Oceanside Waypoint is right there. So, and then uh, there's KNFG right there. I wasn't looking at the GPS a moment ago, but now I see how close we are. So, yeah, let's go ahead and fly to Palm Springs. Once I take off, I will fly over KNFG, just as I mentioned before, and just kind of have a look at the airport, the runway. And then I'll fly by it to 111, or excuse me, 115.5. Uh, right now it's not registering on the dial, so I need to look. Well, KPSB Palm Springs. Let me see. I'm going to look at Sky Vector and see where, how, where that is in relative to where we are currently. It will be. A straight line so we're going to be heading at a bearing of 042 degrees roughly so I'll just fly in that direction it's 53 nautical miles so once we get a little closer it should pick up on the VOR but until then we'll just hop uh, excuse me fly at a heading of 042 degrees so let's check now that we are set to magnetic north and it looks like we do need to adjust this it's off by like 90 degrees almost I think that looks close enough 
and then 049 degrees, we'll set our head to 2. I don't know that I'm right on there, but I can adjust it again once I'm in the air. And then we'll also set our, our Omni Bearing Selector here, or turn the knob here for 049 as well. Basically right before 5. And the same thing needs to be set for this. Brakes. Step outside the aircraft here. I think we're in the dirt, so it might take me a lot of power to get out of it. Well, that wasn't too bad. Two stages of flaps for takeoff. Two steps of flap, however you like to refer to it. Camp Pendleton is where the Marine Corps or the Hollywood Marine MCRD recruits go for second phase of basic training and sometimes during the third phase as well depending on whether or not they're doing uh, work outside or work in the kitchen. Right, I'm going to spool up the engines here and we'll take off. I believe their rifle range is at Camp Pendleton as well. And rotating here, runway's coming to an end. Flaps are up. And I'm turning the nav, or excuse me, the taxi, and landing lights off as we speak. Now the bearing that I put in of 043 degrees to uh, the Palm, Palm Spring Waypoint on 15.5, um, that starts at uh, KNFG. So I, I am going to fly over there as I mentioned and just have a look around and then from there we'll, uh, I'll turn on the autopilot. 
apply 043 degrees until it picks up on the radio. And hopefully it does. We don't have another issue as we did uh, the other morning where I input the radio for NFG or for Pendleton and it didn't pick up at all. So I ended up having to input the radio station for Oceanside and flying to that. And then uh, upon doing that, I saw the aircraft carrier So there is the runway. I'll come to the right of it a little bit. And then I'll fly back left towards it. See what bird drink pattern. support keys possibly can't very well tell from here no not what I thought so I won't say Phantoms, McDonnell Douglas F4 Phantoms. Give me a bit more power now so we can climb out. And this is the bearing that we need to be at, so. Pilot. Speed. Vertical speed of five is good. And I'll climb to about at least a thousand feet, maybe fifteen hundred feet. And Palm Springs, fifty-three nautical miles. I have no way of measuring distance right now because this is not being picked up. And I don't know for certain that it will. I guess what I could do for the time being is go ahead and program Palm Springs into the GPS just to know uh, that we're heading in a general direction and then hope that this also picks up. If it does, I'll go ahead and delete the plan from the GPS. But we'll use the GPS as a backup system this morning over with the VOR since the VOR seems to be spotty out here in California. Lately. Flight plan, push here, and then what was the waypoint's name on the screen? PSP, I'll just put PSP in here.
there we are. So I will do the heading. Maybe it did, oh, it picked, the reason it turned is because it did pick up the radial for it. So we'll fly to the radial. Of course, I should have done it. About the time I, we'll fly to 2,000 feet. I, I'm looking at these mountains here, and we might need to even go a little bit higher than that, but uh, I'll fly to at least 2,000 feet, and I'll set the auto. I mean, the altitude hold. eyeball it and see if we need to climb any higher after that. So I want to check to make sure that we're still aligned with magnetic north on our heading indicator and with the uh, magnetic compass here. Alright, altitude hold engaged. I might back down the RPMs once the plane levels out and picks up speed. Okay with 2500 RPMs. Looks like we're a distance of 51, 50, 50 miles from the waypoint. But I do want to watch the VOR indicator here if we line up. Let's pull up the map on the well and have a look. I'll have to remember where it's at. View. I don't use the map on just the M key. I don't really use the map that often. I'll just be watching this to make sure that that needle starts to move and gets lined up. If not, I'll go by the GPS. So as I'm looking at the needle, I'm looking that right now that it is in between the second and third horizontal dots there. There's a dot here, a dot here, and a dot here. So I want to see it move between the third and fourth, and that way I'll know that we are actually intercepting, and it, and it should, I am going to climb to as well, it should intercept, I'm just being overly anal about it. Alright, we'll do vertical speed, climb once again, and I'll probably climb to at least 2,800 feet, maybe 3,000. Springs Adis. Twenty four point six five. Now I'm using uh, when I'm using the G five thirty. This is the G530, as you can see, I clicked 530, uh, but it's just basically modeled after the, uh, the Garmin 530, and I forgot the ATIS, it is uh, 124.6, for talking there. Um, Alright, let's switch that over, see if we can all switch my ATL information as read. 1600 is the weather. Wind call. Clear. Temperature 14. Dew point 14. Altimeter 2992. Arriving runway 13 right. Departing runway 13 right. Advise. 
looks like we'll be using one three right, but it looks like they only have one runway anyway. We just need to approach it from a bearing of one three zero. So So in any case, what I was saying was that uh, I use Sky Vector when we're using the G530 and many times when we're using the G1000 as well. And that is because I do, well, I mean, I can use the map. I think if I, I don't always use the map. So this, this is a non-standard method for me. Um, but I think like if you click on one of these airports, you can get the nav radios and information from it. I don't. I don't want to tune it, I just want to see it. Um, but it is my understanding you can get all of that information from here. Like here, this VOR DME, it's going to be 115.0. If I saw the Palm Springs, turn. So here's the PO, PSP. So that should give me the, the radio station that we're actually heading to the 115.5 megahertz. And then we could actually just tune it from here instead of actually using the GPS to uh, turn the knob and, and change the radio station that way. I kind of like doing it with the knobs myself. Um, and I typically use Sky Vector as opposed to the map and X plane because Sky Vector is my standard. Uh, like if I'm in flight gear or Microsoft Flight Simulator or X plane, it doesn't matter which flight sim I'm in, Sky Vector always works the same. Uh, I'm going to climb to 4,000. We're going to be turning right and the mountains are a little high over there. Um, so yeah, I use Skyvec. Now, I have purchased a product. It's the GTN 750. Um, I currently have it installed in the X-Plane. I don't know if I can get it in Microsoft Flex Simulator 2020 or not. I have not tried or even looked into it, but I do have it in X-Plane, and within that GPS, I can pull up the approach plates, I can look up airport information as though I were looking on Sky Vector in some instances. I can get the radio and nav information that I need by using the actual GPS. Perhaps sometime what I'll do it is a video uh, demonstrating that. The, the thing with the GTN 750 and the 650 is that this is a 430 by the way this is a 530 and a 430 so what i have is the gtn 750 replacing the gtn 530 and then i have the gtn 650 which is another k4 product uh, by reality xp but it replaces my x-plane 430 or the g430 stack here. Uh, but within those radio or excuse me those within the gtn 750 I'm able to pull up the information that I would typically use Sky Vector for, so I don't actually have to pull over the website like I did with the web browser and then show you what I'm doing on it. I can just uh, do all of that right within the GTN 750. The problem that I see with that is, is that not everybody out there has the GTN 750, and therefore, uh, you know, may not even kind of care about being able to, to do those things. There, there'd be more of a, I think the crowd would be fewer of those simmers out there who actually use the GTN 750 than those who do not use it. So I've been trying to do videos with both. Now it has us right on the. Okay, we are turning. I thought we might be, but I just didn't see it happening. Now I don't know. I am 
streaming right now, but what I'm seeing on my computer screens is a still image. It's almost as though it's not recording anything. So I'm going to go ahead and continue uh, recording as though this is live streaming properly, but this video may not be working out properly. We have 36 more miles to go, and we are going to run right into those. So. Thirty-three miles away point. Looks like we're climbing at a pretty good rate, steady, not losing too much speed currently. I did have to give it just a little more power. heading towards like the highest peak there, which is interesting to me. <clears throat> if I had followed the, uh, the GPS line over there, it's a little lower on that side, and if worse comes to worse, I'll turn over that way. And that plane, of course, as I'm saying it, is doing it. that familiar with the Palm Springs area. I'm not even really sure why I chose to fly to that area. But I was thinking from 
Camp Pendleton to Palm Springs, and then from Palm Springs to 29 Palms, which is another military base, and then from 29 Palms to Edwards Air Force Base, Edwards Air Force Base to Las Vegas, Las Vegas to the Hoover Dam on the Grand Canyon. given away my intent and my uh, the next few flights that I intend to do while we're out here in the west looking at, uh, looking at things out here which there's not a whole lot to see right now but desert now 29 palms uh, from what I gather I know we're not there. The 29 Palms is like right next door or, or right within the Mojave Desert. So it gets pretty hot in the summers, like uh, over 100 degrees every day. Uh, I guess the winters there get pretty cold too. 29 Palms is also uh, very close to Joshua Tree which to me is like a Joshua tree if you've ever seen one. It's like nature's version of a bonsai, uh, you know, like a palm tree, sort of, but a bonsai version of it. So it's very small, it's very small in comparison to a palm tree, and then it juts out in certain directions, more like a, like a bonsai would. And so the, the tree stands uh, several feet tall, um, but again, not as tall as the uh, not as tall as a palm, but it does sort of look like a, it's a it's a very weird looking tree, and, and to me it looks like a desert bonsai. <laughs> There's some green down there. Somebody's been watering along. Almost at 9,500 feet. The dial altimeter set to 9 or 9 or 2. I'm not even sure what the altitude cap is for the Cessna or how high it can fly, whether or not it's even capable of doing 30,000 feet. Not that I intend to go that high anyways, but I was not intending to do over 10,000 feet today either. When I fly the Cessna, I typically stick between three and 4,000 feet, sometimes even 2,000 feet. I don't know what rules and regulations are for altitudes. Uh, I just know that when I fly, I don't want to hit anything, so I try to fly high enough to avoid it. Um, and I think there are airways and whatnot you can look at on Sky Vector that kind of give you an idea of how high you need to be relative to anything you could possibly hit or terrain that might be detrimental to you. So that information is all on Sky Vector. I didn't see anything pertinent for our you know, direction towards the Palm Springs waypoint, um, but I was looking at it not long ago. if we the other great thing you know and I should probably mention it um, the other great thing about the, the G1000 
and the GTN 750 over the G530 is the ability to actually go into the GPS and tell it to show terrain. So if you're too low uh, in the G1000 and in the GTN 750, things around you will become red, uh, meaning you're dangerously low and you need to be you, know, you need to fly with caution. But with this. Unless there's a way to change it that I'm just unfamiliar with, I mean, all we see is black, so we don't get to see any terrain data whatsoever. We just get to see the airports and uh, maybe fixes and the VORs, uh, and that's about it on this. Uh, so it's, it's good enough to get you around and let you know which direction of travel you're going in, but there's no, you know, like I could potentially do an altitude hold right now if I were looking at the G1000, I would know whether or not I'm high enough. But instead, I've got to trust my visual cues, and I could, I'm in a simulator, so I could potentially look outside and see how I am relative to the ground. But in real life, I guess I could uh, actually try to look up over the dash and see. And we're looking good, so I think I will level out. Another 18 miles, and we'll be having to uh, descend significantly before we get to Palm Creek. Palm Spring Airport is actually before the waypoint, so we're much closer to Palm Springs than we were to the airport. So I think we're lucky now that we've flown up to about 10,000 feet. Is due to vertical speed back down. And we'll just go slowly, not too quickly. We, we, we need to make it over that right there. And I may even take it off of autopilot and then just kind of, because I could, if I take it off autopilot, I can turn right there. It looks, looks okay if we go right. I can descend a little bit more quickly and get into that valley and then turn left towards the, the KPSB runway. But I think for the time being, what I'll do is I'll just continue on as I am. Uh, and then I'll use that valley to do circles into some form of pattern near the runway until I get a low enough altitude that I can land. And then I'm going to back down the RPMs on this to about 2500 to 2700. I'm just going to dial here for that. Probably. Down a little bit more. I'll just keep my nose up on the dash here for a minute. Be sure that we're not in any kind of danger. If I were in the Palm Springs area right now, I might be inclined to climb that. I'm taking all day. And again, I wonder how cold it is out there. Okay, I am going to disengage the autopilot and then just hand fly it. GTN 750, I don't know for certain um, if it warns you, like if it says terrain, but I know some aircraft like the airliners, if you get too low, it will start warning you, it will say terrain, pull up, terrain, pull up. So I'll have to check GTN 750 and see if it has that capacity or not. I would like to know. Uh, 
but in any case, you can use the visuals on, there's the runway right there. You can use the visuals, and I need to approach it from a direction of uh, 130, so I'm going to head around to the left here, and then we'll be making a hard right turn to go back. That's excellent. Sometimes I cut myself off. I might be in the middle of saying something and then I, I'm, I'm looking at something else and the media devil will say something about it, so I just switch. So I'm not sure if I've ever been to Palm Springs. You know, like when I lived out in California years ago, but um, I've certainly heard of it. back more than halfway on the throttle but we're dropping very fast very quickly but we're not over so we're not descending too quickly to stress for the aircraft I'm just looking at the vertical speed indicator wow we're really really falling fast Once I get down to about 5,000 feet, I'm going to turn around and head towards the runway. Set this to the direction I need to be going with the runway. So I can use that as a sort of visual cue in the event I don't actually see the runway. I may need to uh, think about. Circle here and just coming down. Trim. I'm trying to just keep descending at about 500 feet per minute. And we need to go another 180 degrees until we're facing the runway again. Just 
a slow turn. And uh, drop them to a decent altitude so that I don't have to force land the aircraft. Force landing is pretty much what I did on the aircraft carrier yesterday morning. They were telling me to wave off and I went ahead and did it anyways. In real life you would not have done what I did and wave off and then look for a better approach. Now we can check with ATIS again just to ensure on that we are still using runway 13 as we are. So we're good there. And still 299 or 2 for the altimeter. I'm going to do the third and final stage of flaps and then monitor my speed. And it uh, looks like we're on the glide slope, as best I can tell from here. I'm not lined up perfectly yet, but other than that. So there is a much smaller runway over there to the left. There is two runways. Can you tell us we could use right, or should I be on left? Shows you how much I paid attention. I saw one three and I was done. Taxi and landing are coming on. Try not to forget those today. Kind of hard to tell that they're all you can see the glare now. <clears throat> but as I was panning over to them, it was hard for me to tell that they were actually on. Maybe I turn them off. The only other option is to look down at the switches, and I'm just using buttons on my yoke to turn them on and off, as opposed to uh, you know, doing this number and flipping them on that way. We're off. So yeah, from Palm Springs, if y'all are interested, um, we'll go to uh, 29 Palms, California. And then from there, we go to Edwards Air Force Base, then Las Vegas, the Hoover Dam. I might even be inclined to uh, try out a helicopter for the Hoover Dam. And then the Grand Canyon. Anyways, I hope you all have enjoyed this video. If, uh, if you haven't, please subscribe, like, give me a thumbs up, and leave a comment. Let me know what you think or if there's anything that you might want me to try or do. If you see a mistake and you want to call me out on it, do that as well, please. I can certainly, uh, you know, you might pick up on something that I entirely missed. And uh, that would be nice to know. So let me know. I'll try to slow it down a little bit and exit left here. I have a tendency to take my leaving the runway a little bit quickly and I usually squelch my wheels. So I'm actually trying to 
Permanente. There's some uh, McDonnell Douglas uh, F4 Phantoms over there. I was not expecting them to be here. And there's some palm trees. Speaking of palm trees and and the desert's version of a bonsai. The other thing about the G1000 and the GTN 750 is, upon landing, I get a better, I can get a better view of the the airport and know where how to taxi much better than I do with the G530. It's like a little a little map. Comes in very handy for taxi. Yeah, I think it would be really cool to visit the Palm Springs area, this this valley, and then uh, maybe climb a couple of those mountains, or even ride motorcycles in those mountains. That would be that would be great. That'd be a lot of fun. All right, I think I might like to park it next to a Phantom if I can. Get close enough to oh runway. Let's go over as quickly as possible. I should look both ways, and that comes in handy with peripheral vision. But when you've actually got to rotate using a knob on your yoke, it's uh it's a little slow going, or the mouse is a little quicker. Yeah. Let's find those F4 Phantoms and park there. Let's get those flaps up too. Th that's a Joshua tree right there. I was not expecting to see a Joshua tree in Palm Springs, but that is a Joshua tree. I should have taken a screenshot. Maybe on the replay I'll get a screenshot of that. Interesting. I, I did not plan on that. It's just kind of neat how some things work sometimes. So that's a gated area. I can't even go in there. <laughs> I'll just park at the gate. <laughs> Let me in. Let me in. I could probably uh, pass through that gate, but I'm not going to do it. I'll just stop at the stop sign and cut the engines. Let it come to a rolling stop. Hit the brakes here, turn everything down, and we'll do a replay. Yeah, it was very interesting to me that I would actually mention 29 Palms because I was not intending to tell y'all uh, what my next plans for the flights were and then to get to talking about the Joshua trees and calling them, you know, nature's or the desert's version of a bonsai, but then to pass by one randomly at the Palm Springs Airport. I really, really, really did not plan on that. It just happenstance. Okay, let's get an external view. And a lot of that was taxi. Okay, right there looks good.
That looks like a nice area. I'd love to eat. I'm going to do this flight again in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 to have a look at the visuals in comparison. I'm sure it would look really nice as so long as it's not looking like apocalyptic like the San Diego area was looking when we were flying through it. Yeah, it would be nice to see what Palm Springs looks like in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. I'm sure it's beautiful. And I've got to rotate the aircraft so I can get a screenshot of that. Joshua Tree on the pilot. There it is right there. At least, oh, there's another one over here. Probably a few of them if I just keep my eyes closed to them. I've seen three thus far. And I'm not sure how far 29 Palms is from Palm Springs, so it really shouldn't be of any surprise to me that I am seeing Joshua trees out here. Um, but I was I was not expecting to see it in X Plane 11. I think is what I'm trying to get at. I didn't know that I would be seeing Joshua trees in the game at all. So that was just a pleasant surprise to me. Do a screenshot there. I do have that one. There's another kind of uh, interesting plane there that I like. I don't know the name of that one. Ooh. Looks like a desert plant. Okay, slow boat, give us some gas. Uh, I was taxing very fast at all there. Screenshot right there to get the uh, this and the Joshua tree, and then there's another Joshua tree that's closer to the aircraft. That's the one I really want to get. Again, if anybody's not familiar with how to take a screenshot in X Plane 11, shift space and it, it takes a screenshot, and puts it into your X Plane 11 output folder. Finally decide to put the flaps up. I should be doing that immediately upon exiting the runway. That's my thoughts on it. And there's the McDonnell Douglas F4 Phantom. There's a Cirrus Vision over in there. And that's what, a KC-10 or something? Or, I don't know. Screenshot. Enough of that. Perhaps one day I will fly in one of those F4 Phantoms. I'm sure, it'd be fun to fly. Maybe upon landing at the Edwards Air Force Base, I will fly around there since there's plenty of runways and they're nice and long. And if I have trouble figuring out how to stop the aircraft, I won't have to worry so much because <clears throat> the runways are so long. It is a great place to, uh, you know, hop in a fighter jet or something like that and practice at it in the airport. Sometimes uh, I think in real life the, uh, the space shuttle, they, they return back to Earth, they, they land there as an alternate. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, YouTube, I'm just going to verify everything's off. Um, hope you all have enjoyed the flight, <clears throat> and thank you for watching. Happy New Year.